one thing that has been utterly consistent uh, in all my interviews with agentic schools is that who's there matters because it changes how the school is moving forward. You know, one of the things I think is just fundamental to being an agent, supporting the agency of learners and teachers, staff or whatever you want to call them, uh, is even if it's the same people, tomorrow they're different. You know, it, it, you know, it trans we're humans and we transform over time. And I think that's a valuable feature, not a bug. <laughs> that's where I think that this, the, the universities do look for self-direction things up because it, you know the, what they're looking for is somebody who knows themselves well enough to take advantage of what they have to offer. You could, um, also, you could al also almost say that the inverse mm. is true of the traditional system. Who's there doesn't matter. It's right, going right. to be the same system no matter who's there. Well, you, <laughs> the, the, the standardization. And, and, and that's exactly what a lot of the, the, that work has done is like even at the university level, we're, we're all going to have the same requirements. You know, we're going to have Carnegie units. We're going to have, you know, the, yeah. the type of standardization was, you know, just incredible. And it, and it, it the university system demanded it of the K-12 system. That's the, you know, the committee of 10 back in 1890, you know, said we want Carnegie units and we want seat time and we want, <laughs> and it demanded those things. And then all the high schools just went along with it. Yeah. They're the they're the experts. They know. Right. But now I think it's, it's the, the, it's, it's going to flip or it has flipped or it's in the process of flipping where schools with self-directed learners are going to be making different demands of what higher education needs to be. And higher education is in a very interesting point because of the, in, in the U S in particular, costs are super high, you know, debt, and and so people are rethinking. Like, wait a minute, <laughs> um, and 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 schools are crashing at the lower end. Like we had Merrillhurst University here, and in, in just down the street here, flopped a few years ago. And I think that there's we we had another one too. But but there's a whole bunch of things that things are transforming, and it's not quite as neat as like the release of an iPhone and suddenly everything changes. Um, I, I think it's it's what we're doing in terms of what I call agentic schools, democratic schools, learner-centered, learner-directed, is that that is on the rise. Um, it, it, I wouldn't say it's commanding force yet, but I think it's going in the direction that, that is necessary and it's going well, yes, to yes, change yes. everything. This is the Agentic Schools Vodcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. What makes education possible is the satisfaction of psychological needs. So that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host, Don Berg.